Hey YouTube, welcome to TCT and the crazy trouble nation of YouTube the crazy because I don't know why I always wait till I start a video and then decide I need to put on chapstick. <laughs> and also because sometimes I just babble, I'll start a sentence, forget what I was saying, um, make up words that don't exist. In my mind they do, I guess. I'm, I'm a little touched. Um, the troll because I consider myself a troll. When I put on face paint, a cute troll, but a troll nonetheless. And so this is going to be a get ready with me. And I'm going to talk about um, milk primer. I will list everything below that I am putting on my face. Um, this is a polyamory video, dating video, because my partner and I broke up a few days ago. Yes, y'all. Um... It was his choice, and I'm not even going to get into his reasons. Well, his reason, yeah, I will, because I, I want to give some context to what I'm going to say. He said there were some things that he needed to work on for himself. I had triggered a bad memory from his childhood unintentionally, and we did talk about it at the time, so I was actually surprised that it came up again because... The occasion was back in January. And for me, when, when something's discussed, I and it seems like um, the person is understanding, you know, my point of view and they're understanding where I'm coming from and that it was not intentional. And also, I do apologize. Um, so for me, it's over. Like, the situation is done. So I was surprised it still came up. And forgive me if I talk slow. I tend to talk slow when I'm trying to... <laughs> on makeup and talk at the same time um <laughs> and so it boiled down to just our communication and sometimes people don't always uh deal with things when they come up and the, the issue with that is and I know other people like this if you don't deal with something, if you don't resolve it within yourself, that same issue is going to keep coming up. And some of you may be able to relate to that. Like even in my personal life, if something is bothering me, if I don't talk about it, it, it keeps coming up. It just keeps resurfacing until I deal with it. And if that means discussing it or if that means changing my perspective, like whatever it means. And he did acknowledge he should have communi been a little more communicative about the issue and how and his feelings I was going to use a sponge but I'm thinking I want to use a brush but I didn't bring a foundation brush so I am just going to use a sponge um he did not want to work on communicating better with me while he was working on resolving his other issues and that was very hard for me to accept um i used to always say we had great communication looking back i will rephrase that to say when we communicated about our issues communication was great there was definitely a breakdown in communication between the two of us and so it was, a, it was like an hour long conversation. It was a good conversation. And of course I was hurt. Of course I broke down and cried a few times because it's sad. Any breakup is sad. Even if somebody's abusive or they're cheating on you and you know you're better off not in that relationship, it's still a loss. It's still a loss. And so it was really sad and it was emotional. And I get, clinically I get where he's coming from. Sometimes people are not emotionally equipped or psychologically equipped to deal with more than one issue at one time, especially if it's a major issue. And I knew that we could have gotten past it um, and he didn't want to work on it. So I was like, okay. And so I'm actually about 10 minutes after the call, I was actually okay. Cause I started thinking about, okay, what, what really was the issue? And it seemed like it really wasn't me it was him wanting to work on issues without also working on communicating better with me. 
but the core issue was not me. And also I thought, okay, our communication really wasn't like the best. And I realized, and I sat and thought, I do analyze myself. <laughs> I do that a lot. And I realized that I was a hypocrite because I wanted him to be transparent with me all the time. And yet there were things that had bothered me throughout the relationship that I was not transparent about. Um, my reasoning was, which was faulty, was I didn't want to hurt his feelings or I didn't want him um, to feel bad about things that may have been bothering me. And I realized what a hypocrite I was. And so even if you think, you know, expressing your needs to another person may hurt their feelings or they may feel bad, you're still entitled to have your needs met, especially when you feel like you're meeting this other person's needs and they're saying there are and you're doing things to make their life easier and they acknowledge that. And so it's kind of like, okay, are we putting in like equal energy into this relationship? And I realized, um, sadly that the answer was no. And it was partly my fault. Well, actually it was my fault because I forgot to put on my other cream products. Um, because I wasn't open about things that had been bothering me. And I realized also that I do tend to make it maybe a little too easy for people to be with me. Well, for one, when I get in a relationship, it takes a while anyway. Um, and I, I don't lightly choose <laughs> partners. And so if it gets to the point of a relationship, then like this is really something special to me and I'm gonna do what I can do um, to make it work. And so I feel like that's what I was doing. Um, and also what I learned was to not constantly put someone else's feelings and perceived needs ahead of my own. Like it's okay to meet other people's needs, but are they also meeting yours? And my needs were not being met because I wasn't making them known. However, there are some things that don't need to be said. Like if I'm with you and I'm sick, you know, make sure that there's something for me to eat. And if it's not, go to the store and get something or, you know, bring me orange juice or, you know, whatever. And some people don't think that way or they just don't have the experience of caring for another person or being there emotionally for another person. And they can see the things that you do, but it doesn't translate into, well, maybe this is something I should do too. Because I love this when she does this. And this is great. This is awesome. I don't think people blend this out with a sponge. <laughs> Need another brush here. I'm going to use my concealer brush. And I think it's because I put this on top of powder. I don't know. Yeah, this is looking kind of janky. And so that's something else I learned too, is to make sure that the relationship is balanced. To make sure that that person is putting in the same amount of commitment and the same amount of energy that you're putting into. But first and foremost, like I said, is to be more transparent, which I wasn't. And so that's, that's something that I learned. And I talked to a friend of mine who's also a clinician. And <laughs> nine times out of 10, when we talk about things, we both end up, talking about it from a clinical standpoint. And so I knew talking to her, she would give it to me straight and she wouldn't be like, oh girl, you did all you could do and you was a good partner. But when I, when I had said about the communication stuff and I'm, and also I gave a lot of allowances that I shouldn't have. And I would say, well, what do you think? She'd be like, I think you're right. Like you did, you did put, give too many allowances. You should have been more communicative. And when I said, you know, I feel like I was a hypocrite for wanting him to be open. And I always was. And she was like, yeah, you were a hypocrite. I love her to death. Like I love friends like that who are just up front <laughs> and saying what needs to be said. And I also realized that um, I was allowing the good aspects of the relationship to outweigh, to far outweigh <laughs> the, um, the not so good aspects of the relationship. And again, it goes to my lack of 
open communication. And so that's where that is. And so I feel good. Um, Cause for me, whatever the situation it's like, what can you learn from it so that you're better in the future? And so that's kind of where I am. And it was really great talking with her and processing with her and walking away with, okay, this is what I need. I know I need to do in the future. You know, transparency is a non-negotiable for both of us. Like I need to be more open as well. And if my needs are not being met, then I need to express that those needs aren't being met. And if the person doesn't meet the needs that I express, then that's not the person for me. And some people are not equipped to do certain things. And that's another thing too. You have to determine, can this person meet the needs that I'm expressing that I have that are unmet? And if they're not, why not? Either they're not capable, which means you're incompatible because you do deserve to have your needs met, especially if you're trying your best to meet someone else's needs. Um, so either they're not capable or they just don't really care that much to put in the effort. And so it's one of those two things. But either way, as I'm saying, they're not compatible with you because, you know, you're in a relationship to have needs met and to be with this person that you love. And so those are things that I have come to acknowledge for myself is just to, to be transparent and not to forego my comfort on a consistent basis um, for someone else. Meaning, if you're physically or emotionally uncomfortable somewhere, not to keep putting yourself in that situation, at least without that person knowing and understanding where you're coming from. And for me, the purpose of being with someone is to make each other's lives more pleasant, make each other's lives um, easier, more manageable, and just to have fun with that person and to grow with that person. And I realized that I was dealing with a lot of emotional and physical discomfort for the sake of wanting him to be okay and not voicing. Sometimes I would, and then it would just kind of get overshadowed with other things. For the first time, I'm going to use the Modern Renaissance palette. I don't know where I'm going to go with this. <laughs> oh, I just dropped it in my lap. I got shadow on my pants. But this is what it looks like. So I would like to hear from you guys about breakups. What have you learned from a breakup? Because to me, that's what it's about is when you have a breakup, even if it's the other person's choice or even if it's your choice based on their behavior what did you learn from it because whether you if whether it's your choice or not there's still something you can learn if it's like say okay i'm gonna use this example which is a true one my second husband was unfaithful and we were not in an open marriage he um, continued to lie about being unfaithful because people say, why not just have an open marriage? And I said, well, you kept lying about it. So, I mean, you can't have an open marriage if one wants to keep lying about what they're doing outside of the home. And so it took me two and a half years to decide that I was not going to live my life that way. Yes, y'all, it took me two years. And so when they say, oh, what well, you need to take time after you know, breakup or divorce, I'm like, it took me two years to decide to leave. I'm like, so this is not anything sudden for me or something I need to get over. For me, if I do break up with someone, it takes me such a long time to get to the point to say, okay, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. By the time I get to that point, I mean, I've, I've done all that in, that internal work and the internal you know, dialogue and I was ripping the plastic off the mirror. So by the time I get there, I've already done all of that processing. It's not like, Oh, yeah, one day I'll just wake up and be like, okay, we're going to be over. And then I need time to get over it. It was two years in the making for me to <laughs> get over it. And things just 
wouldn't change. She just kept denying it. And so I still sat back and thought, what can I learn from this situation? Because I chose him as a husband. Rushed into it. I did. That was the main thing. Um, but whether you initiate a breakup or somebody else initiates a breakup, there's always something you can still learn about yourself. And so my question for you, for all of you, is what's something you have learned? And if you know that you do have certain tendencies, are you working on, well, I'm not going to say tendencies because we all have tendencies and tendencies are not necessarily a bad thing. If you have issues um, stemming from childhood or whenever, or even like issues or triggers or traumas from past relationships, what have you done to to resolve those issues within yourself because if you don't resolve those issues if you don't resolve those triggers or at least be able to compartmentalize those triggers to okay this person did this and so if somebody else triggers you the same way you're not associating not associating that person with the initial person that created that trigger and that's something that some people are not able to do and people who are not able to do that those are the ones, oh, all men are dogs, all women are bitches. It's like they just lump everybody together because they can't differentiate between, you know, the person who hurt them and the rest of society, the rest of that gender or a particular community. And so my thing was, what can I learn about myself from my now past relationship? that I can grow from it and be a better person. And for me, that's what it's about. I'm 50 years old and I'm always still analyzing myself and thinking of, okay, what can I, what can, what is, what is something that I need to work on to be a better person? And not even necessarily for someone else. So it's not like I'm thinking, what can I learn from this relationship so that I can be better for the next relationship? No, it's like, what can I learn to be better for myself and because it is based in communication and expressing my needs that's something that carries over to every relationship in my life every friendship in my life and even with family and so it's not a point of oh yeah you're going to be good for the next man it's like i just want to be good period you know what i'm saying and so don't get mixed up in you know well, i want to learn this because the next guy will love it no love yourself Love yourself and just continue striving to be a better you. I don't know what I'm doing with these colors. <laughs> and so I think I'm done with the relationship aspect, but I'm not done my makeup look. So I'm going to switch topics and I'll make sure to title this video accordingly. I'm going to switch topics to how COVID is affecting my life. Um, people were asking me and I'm thinking... It really hasn't too much because I've retired six years ago. And so my life is pretty mundane. I have writing projects that are like forever there and forever begging for my attention. And I'm uh, got to get my mind right. Because <laughs> when I'm stuck on like my current project I'm working on, well, the primary one I'm working on, I need to reformat the chapters. And so in my mind, I've been trying to think of how can I reformat, how can I reformat the chapters, making sure that the, the length is equal for each chapter. How can I further break down current chapters without making them too long or too short? And so I haven't actually been writing because I've been ruminating on what it is that I need to do. And it really is just um, formatting issue that I need to work on right now as far as the chapter lengths and Things like that. And so I haven't been writing because my brain is unsure of where I'm going with that aspect of the book. So other than that, the only main difference, actually, yeah, <laughs> the main difference is not working down at Baltimore Playhouse because I was working down there um, two or three times a month. And that hasn't been happening. Conferences and things I was supposed to go to were, there's no color on this brush. I'm just blending stuff out. 
conferences were of course um, canceled. Looking at my phone, this all looks like one color, but looking down here, I do see different colors. I don't know. It's kind of weird to me, but. Um, so that's been like the main difference in my life is just not working down at Baltimore Playhouse. Once a month, I would go out um, to lunch or dinner with friends. And I had just started, and I'm so glad I did get it done for this year. In January, I also had decided for my brother and I to start going out, meeting for lunch um, every other month. And I'm glad that happened because then COVID hit and I wouldn't have seen him. He's my brother from another mother and another father. <laughs> I've known him since high school and we reconnected, oh gosh, years ago. And I've been making it a point this year to stay more in touch with people that I care about. I am getting real quiet trying to do my brows. So that's the main difference. Um, I was going to Jersey at least once every two months to take my mom to get her hair done. The nursing home closed the visitors in March. So I haven't been to see her. And I also haven't been to visit my grandmother who is 94. Cause I'm like, I just don't want to risk, you know, possibly taking any germs over there. Even though I only walked to the mailbox. I have walked around Glasgow Park a few times um, with a friend of mine. And she walks like on one side and I walk on the other side. So we're not even like close to each other. We're we're probably about five feet apart, maybe six. And I wear a mask sometimes. It depends on how hot that I get. And, and I do have asthma. And my actual mask mask didn't come in yet. And so I've just been wearing like a, a fleece scarf and I've been doubling it over. And so it gets like super hot. And then it ends up aggravating my asthma. So I end up taking it off. But she does wear a mask. And so I've been doing that and I'll walk to check my mail, which is where I'm going today after I finish this makeup look, whatever it's going to look like. <laughs> um, last I went to the store was a couple weeks ago. I think I might go again later this week only because and I'm not a hoarder at all, but I, I know that some of the meat processing plants are closing down and so i'm wondering like do i need to just go and just get more meats to put in my freezer just in case and there's something going on with oil so i'm like okay do i want to just also fill up my tank with gas um i think i have like a half a tank and i haven't been going anywhere so i'm like do i even really need to fill up with gas like where am i going i'm not going down to maryland anymore to see my previous boo because that relationship is over. So it really has not affected my life. And so I'm actually kind of digging it. Like just everybody just being just low key. There's munches. They're having virtual munches. I haven't even done that because I'm just like, like I'm going to just sit here on a computer and just look at people. And some of them are like three hours long, which the munch length we're using, I'm having trouble seeing in this mirror down here. So I'm going to get quiet while I try and do my liner. And so I just don't, <laughs> I just have a hard time imagining just like sitting in like a virtual conference. Well, not a conference, a virtual munch for like three hours. Like, what are you going to talk about for three hours? And I would probably be the most quiet one. That does not look right. <laughs> and so I haven't even done that. There is one tonight, and it's actually a discussion. It's not a munch on um, how to welcome POCs, people of color, into the kink community or into your kink space if you have um, a public dungeon. Well, a private dungeon because none of them, well, not many are. None that I know of. Well, I do know of one that's actually like open to the public where you could just walk in. Um, and so I am going to listen in on that call. And I think it's like two hours long. So I'm just like, I don't really know if I'm going to stay. <laughs> so 
But that is, I can be using a mirror on this palette. And so that's where I'm at and that's where I've been, which isn't anywhere, but like psychologically where I've been as far as how COVID is, is affecting my life. I do miss Baltimore Playhouse. I do miss, you know, my chosen family, as they call it, when you build relationships with different people in the community and you start to actually feel like they're family and they feel the same about you. They call that your chosen family. And so I do miss those people. And sadly, <laughs> it's, it's not like hundreds and hundreds of people. But I like the hustle and bustle of when I used to work down at the Playhouse and seeing new faces coming in and being a part of um, educating people on different types of play and different types of equipment. You know, I, I like to teach and I like to be useful, I like to be helpful. And so that aspect I miss. Um, as far as home, I'm hoping you got, I'm hoping my voice is not going in and out. And I know sometimes it does that when the heat kicks on or in the summer when the AC kicks on. And so if my voice is going in and out or the way I'm holding this is changing my voice, I do apologize for that. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else to say. What are you guys doing during COVID? I'm really pausing like I'm waiting to hear an answer. <laughs> Welcome to the crazy. Uh, what else could I say? So yeah, so nothing's going on kink watch. There has been online play parties and I'm like, how you gonna do that? Like for me, the play I like to do, like I wanna touch and not necessarily with my hands, but with my equipment, you know, impact play and different things like that. So it's like, how do you do that? And I asked um, a friend of mine, I'm like, how do you, how do they do that? She says she thinks it's more of an exhibitionist, like people who just want to show stuff, do stuff in front of other people. And I'm just like, okay, all right. <laughs> Not my thing, but okay. Because I didn't get the appeal of um, having an online play party. But I do know there are some people who are into like the web stuff. Ooh, got it by those. I learned to do that before I put on my mascara because I don't wear falsies. And when I would spray my face after I put on mascara or when I would blink, it's like I could feel my eyelashes <laughs> sticking together. Not that I really have really long ones or anything, but. So yeah, so what else am I gonna do in this video? What else am I gonna say? I'm actually doing like a completely full face. Oh, that's say like almost 30 minutes. If you are still here, thank you. Um, tonight when I take this off, I am going to do a get ready with me. What is it called? It's not get ready with me. Go to bed with me. And I'm going to show you guys my nighttime uh, makeup. Mm, nighttime makeup. My nighttime um, skincare routine. And I do use makeup wipes. I hate the feel of the water the Marcella water or like the cleansing oil. I hate the feel of it seeping into my eyes. How you're supposed to drench the cotton pad and just like press it onto your eyes and let it dissolve the makeup. It's always seeps into my eyes and I just cannot stand that oily feeling in my eyes. And so I end up not pressing it long enough and then I end up wiping the pads anyway. And I'm like, if I'm gonna be wiping, I might as well just use makeup wipes. And so I did order though. <laughs> Some Marcella water, and I did order some of the Shishido cotton pads, and those are here. But I'm waiting for the Marcella water to come in the mail, and I'm hoping it's at my mailbox. And so that's really why I'm going to my mailbox today. And so I will show you guys tonight how I take off my makeup. And so I figured if I'm going to show that, I need to put on makeup. And that's what we're going to do. And I will probably, today is 
What is today? I was gonna look on my phone. This is my phone up here. What is today? I don't know. <laughs> I think it, you know what? I'm gonna find out. Let me reach for something. Today is Monday. So I'm gonna upload this probably Tuesday. And so my nighttime skincare routine, I will upload probably Thursday. Cause I don't wanna have like back to back videos. I know my viewer count is kinda low, which is why I appreciate you for being here. But I still don't wanna have back to back videos. Even a lot, even I do think a lot of people are watching more YouTube now because they are home. And some people have started uploading every day who were not <laughs> uploading every day. And so, thank you for being here. Um, leave comments below on any thoughts you have on anything I said. I know I talked about relationships, COVID not really changing my life, <laughs> missing the playhouse, not going to virtual munches or virtual play parties, and checking my mail. And also, if you do have the Modern Renaissance palette, what are your thoughts on it? And again, everything that I put on my face will be listed down below. And I thank you for watching. Bye. If you like this stuff, subscribe, hit the like button, click the notification bell, all of that. Thank you. Bye.